Give me a clap. Give me a clap. Aaliyah, Aaliyah. You remind me of a West Side story. <laughs> Played by Carlos Santana. <laughs> Is that song written about you? <laughs> I mean, can I claim it as? I don't think so. Let but... us claim it. I think the original lyric is uh, Maria, Maria, but who cares where it is? Can you see the screen yet? Okay, I still cannot see the screen. Okay. I can see a delay of myself, and I guess that's going to be have, have to be good yeah. enough. So I that's, the way, <laughs> that's the way we're going to roll. It's what? Golden Mike 51, y'all. 51 episodes. Aaliyah, do you know why there's 51 episodes? No, tell me why. Because you cannot cancel me. I am the producer of this show. This show stops when I say it stops. <laughs> so 51 episodes. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you. Um, Aaliyah Levinson Kehoe is here. She's been featured on Huffington um, Post. Um, the World Happiness Summit. Um, she's going to be uh, talking today about improving your business, starting with self-love. Now, Leah, I know that you're a life coach and you, you're you just like me. You specialize in coaching new coaches as well as he helping entrepreneurs sort of reach their, um, reach their goals. Yes. Um, and not only financially, but like life goals. Yes. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second improving your business with self-love. That's freaking awesome. Now, for those of you who are watching the Facebook Live or watching the replay, let's do something fun. My name is Mark Cordona, if you haven't met me. Um, I am a positive psychology coach. I'm the founder of the Make Money Coaching Program. Um, when it comes to positive psychology, it's two simple things. Two simple things, people. Number one, are you feeling good on a daily basis are the things that are happening in your life making you happy, right? Number two, are you feeling fulfilled in your work, in your life? It's those two simple things, people, feeling happy and feeling fulfilled. When you're feeling happy and you're feeling fulfilled, you don't need me as a positive psychology coach. Just live your life, have fun. Now, Leah, Aaliyah, 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 I've got a question for you. Yes. Are you feeling good and living in full fulfillment right now? Right now, this very moment, I'm feeling amazing because your energy is honestly insane. And I've just like <laughs> risen 10 levels. So yes, yes, yes. Kia, Kia. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> now, for those of you, again, who are watching live, Watching the replay, if you're feeling like Aaliyah, if you're feeling good and you're living life to its full purpose, Aaliyah, I want you to raise your hands up. Raise your hands up, right? Yeah, I know you can't see. Oh, raise the roof. Now, now turn it into a heart. Turn your, your hands into a heart. I want you to give oh. Aaliyah and I some hearts. Aaliyah, how do you make your heart beat? Boom. Make the heart beat. Make the heart beat. Make the heart beat. Give us some hearts if you're living life to the fullest and you're happy. Sweet. Oh, she's still doing it. I mean, I'm not stopping. She's still her. doing it. Left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> like I'm totally trying to remember the move set there. That's cool. <laughs> now here's another thing. Ali and I, we met in a, talking about positive psychology and happiness. So a lot of people think that positive psychology or happiness is all about craps and giggles 24 seven double rainbows across the sky. Um, it's taco Tuesday every single day. Right. But that's not fully what positive psychology is about. It's about the ups and downs and all the rounds of life. If you're having one of those days where it's a Tuesday and you're, you're like, you know what Cordone, I hate that song that you just sang. You just put me in a bad mood. Or you woke up and you're like, you know what? Like, I'm just not feeling it. Something's off today. Um, or if you used to know what, you, what made you fulfilled and you feel like you've outgrown it, you've been in a job and you're like, holy crap, is it weird of me to say that like I've outgrown this job or I want to look at something new and transfer to something else? It's okay to be living that. That's part of your hero's journey, people. 
Um, now, you might not be feeling completely amazing right now, but your heart beats just like Aaliyah and I. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you're living your life. Um, we're thinking about you, too. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Aaliyah didn't give a thumbs up. Um, <laughs> I was just taking it in. I was taking in all the things. <laughs> now here's and, and I'm I'm thinking about this too because Aaliyah's like that is completely wrong as a positive psychology. What you just said, Gordo. No, I, I hope that's it. amazing. I hope that's positive psychology. Now, the last thing is this, and in a world, in a world that is so 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 depleted of connection, in a world where um, we can be losing hope. This is the big one, whether you're feeling fulfilled, whether you're feeling down, whether you're feeling up, down, all around, if you're feeling optimistic about tomorrow, if you're feeling optimistic that tomorrow will be a better day, then that's a good thing. And Aaliyah, I want you to do this. There's another button down there. I know you can't see me, but there's a, there's a wow face button. And so, Aaliyah, I want to see you make a wow face with me right now. The count of three. We're making a wow face. One. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. What? I added a wow face emoji to the uh, to the live. That was my wow face for you. We're making a real live wow face. We're making a wow face together. Oh my gosh. We're going to do the hard. Let's do it. One, two, three. Wow face. (laughs) Mark, you didn't prepare me for this. I did not have a wow face ready to go. (laughs) But I'm I'm getting rolling with it. (laughs) That was like an anti wow face. Like a. That was like a what is happening face. (laughs) <laughs> um, Aaliyah, thank you for playing along. Thank you for playing along. Um, a lot of people think that in order to talk about business concepts and raising your stuff to the next level, um, sometimes we deprive ourselves of levity. Um, so at very least, um, this can be fun and entertaining for everybody. This is really the fun part now. We we got all the fun intro- introductions out of the way. I mean, we're talking about Huffington Post, World Happiness Summit. Um you know, a, a life coach. Um, but before all of that, and before we talk about improving your business with self-love, Aaliyah, what's your story? What's my story? Yeah. Um, huh. As in like, how did I, how did I get here? How did I start coaching? All of that. There's, there is no qualifiers. It is, you can start from your birth, where, it, where your story is important. That's where I, I would love for you to start. I was born in a small town in Chicago. Oh, no. Um, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Where my story is important. Um, you know, I think that's okay. I'll start here because it's what's kind of coming up for me now. Yeah. I've always, I've always loved connecting with people. I've always loved kind of helping people. And I was a former social worker. I'm still a social worker, um, but I'm doing coaching full time. Um, And, you know, I think when I, it's funny, I was actually just writing this for something I was sending out. But I think that um, when I found the field of coaching, I just felt so, so connected to it in terms of like taking your life, um, you know, from where you are now to thriving And there was something so kind of like special for me in that because I kind of felt a lot of times like I was on autopilot with different things and just like going through the motions, you know, Um, and I knew that I, I felt like I was capable of more. I felt like I wanted to do something more meaningful and I almost wanted to like put myself to the test of that while being able to help other people do the same thing. Okay. Now uh, let's go to let's go to baby Aaliyah. Like, <laughs> what was it that baby Aaliyah dreamed of when you were young, like and and growing up? These are these are good questions, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to paint a picture. Just trying to paint a picture. Who is baby Aaliyah? Um. Okay. What what I dreamed of. Um. Yeah. You know, I always thought that I was going to be a writer. Um, Mm. And luckily in this career, you know, there's 
you're doing marketing, you're reaching out, you're you're writing. It's all a part of it. Um, but I think maybe not as a baby, but as a kid, <laughs> I was really into writing. And but I was a super shy. Um, I was a super shy girl. So, I mean, really? I n- never would raise my hands in class. Um, like I was super duper duper shy. So if someone told me I would be like doing videos and talking to you and bouncing up and down and doing like a heart thing on this. <laughs> I would feel like you're out of your mind. Um, So, yeah, I think that's like a little bit about me. Yeah. Can can you talk a little bit? I I did get to see something about someone named Sally. Sally. Sally, like someone who like uh, like connected people via phone operators and stuff like that. Oh my god. Yeah. Is that a real story? Can you tell uh, us that story? Unfortunately, yes. Um, oh, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> um, no, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be named Polly and I wanted to be a telephone operator because you got to push like all the buttons and it just seemed so much fun to me. So I had these amazing aspirations. Yeah. Well, you know, technically speaking, as a coach, you get to push people's buttons sometimes. Well, so that if that's reaching. That's so reaching. <laughs> um, no, that's that's really interesting. And so you 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 go and you're a super shy person. Um, and then we start moving forward and you become uh, you, you go into social work. Social work is heavy duty work. Um, and, and so how did we go from, you know, um, uh, sort of, you know, wanting to write, uh, you know, uh, even being Polly when you were younger, connecting things um, or plugging things in to going into social work? Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, a couple of things. So I think when I was um, when I was writing, I was writing for a small magazine in Chicago um, and I was doing interviews with people. And Mm -hmm. I realized that my favorite part of the interviews was really getting to know people on a deeper level. And I always wanted to find out more. I always wanted to find out more. And it made sense to me that like, wait, if I really want to find out kind of more about people, what drives them, motivations, all of that kind of stuff, that I would go into social work. Um, And that coupled with the fact that, you know, I had a death in my family. um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course that turns your life around, you know, completely to say the least. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it got me to thinking about the bigger picture of life and what really matters and what's important and how to kind of what you were talking about with positive psychology, just um, how to how to be fulfilled and what it really means to do that and how you can connect your purpose. And, you know, um, so without getting (laughs) too deep, um, that's kind of what, you know, what drew me to to social work and in so many words. <laughs> sure. Uh, and I mean, um, at, you know, what was, uh, describe to us what, what you did in social work, because there's so many different aspects of social work, um, yeah. you know, and, and then when you're, you're thinking about sort of very uh, expansive, exponential things going on in your life and, and the idea of the bigger picture while doing social work, you know, um, what were, what were you doing? In social yeah. Work? It, with social work. Yeah. Um, so I was doing kind of like case management, um, within a healthcare company. Um, sure. so I was doing like psychosocial assessments with different people and figuring out kind of their needs and, you know, um, basically just helping them one assessment at a time. Um, yeah. and you know, it was, it was awesome because I loved being able to connect with people, like talking to people, communicating. I love it, you know? Um, but I kind of was like, uh, instead of just like going back and surviving, I want like kind of how we were talking about before. I want like the, how do we like thrive? How do we take it from here to where we want to be? Yep. Well, I think what's interesting too, is that, um, I believe social work has like a, a, a shelf life of like six, seven years. Like it has a high burnout rate, right? Yeah. And you were in it for, you were in it for 10 years, you know? Um, Did did you? I wasn't in it for 10 years. Oh, sorry. 
no, that's okay. But I would have been like going strong if I was. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it was, um, but could you relate to, could you relate to that high burnout rate and, and, and the demands yeah. of a social worker? Oh my gosh, totally. Um, I think that social workers and really like when you're in helping fields, you give so much of yourself, you know, and um, it's sometimes you have to kind of like step back, ground yourself in you and start from that place, which we all know sometimes isn't the easiest to do. I know I've had trouble with that before. Um, but I think with with social work, you're, you're, you know, it's just you're always helping people and um, there definitely is a, a high burnout rate with social work for sure. Um, not to say it's not great for anyone who is watching and wants to be a social worker. It's so rewarding and totally fulfilling, but, um, yeah, I can see where there's a, a burnout rate. Yeah. It's, it's one of those professions from what I hear that it, it's sort of, uh, you know, the, the giving element, um, is a major component of, of, of being successful. Um, and it's just a part of the culture that you give, 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 give. And and then like six years is not a, a whole, and that's a pretty sh short shelf life right there. You know, um, if, if, if I, if I could have you reflect on um, what you, what you extrapolated as like the number one thing that you got out of it, whether it be a value whether it be a skill set, uh, whether it be a perspective, what would you say would be the number one thing that you got out of um, social work? Ooh, good question. Um, you know what I really got out of social work was uh, um, perspective. Perspective. Hmm. Um, you know, we get so caught up in all these things going on in our everyday lives and get frustrated and annoyed um, by like little things, you know, and then you talk to someone who's like, I don't have water coming into my house. And you're like, oh, you know, um, <laughs> me and my first world problems. <laughs> right, exactly. Champagne problems. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so total perspective. Um and yeah, kind of getting into that place where you just start feeling, you know, you you start feeling gratitude for what you have. Um, and you also really feel for these people, you know, perspective, patience, um, you know, just your heart kind of grows with people. Yeah. It's like yeah. a great thing too, you know? Yeah. Would you, would you ever say, say that um, um, it, it was difficult for you to... Um, Dis disconnect from your clients like w would you be like oh my god i so want to do things and you end up taking that home from work was, was that something that you ever felt as a as a social worker okay i love that question because i feel like this came up within social work school and among social workers it always seemed like there were two types of people yeah. one who could just disconnect after yeah. working with clients, they just totally separate. They're able to compartmentalize. And then two, someone who is like, it literally weighs on me so much, right? Um, so where did you fall in that? So it's so funny you ask because I used to be... <laughs> I used to be able to just be like, bye. And like, not, I mean, I don't want to say that in a heartless way, um, yeah. but I used to be able to really compartmentalize. End of the day, done. I'm on to my life. For some reason, Mark, recently, yeah. it's like, it's a little more difficult to do, which means that it's more important for me to kind of you know, set boundaries, do my own self-care work, make sure that I'm kind of like, leaving things where they need to be left because otherwise, you know, it's, it's too much for one person. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say ask you about this now, but you've been coaching since 2014. Um, I, I believe, right. You, you got yeah. your degree in 14. Yes. Um, come on, come on, get your facts straight, man. When you put it out there. I gotta, I gotta memorize it. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just my brain's like, what? 14? What year are we in? I'm more, I'm more than just a person that <laughs> sings, sings Carlos Santana songs. Come on. No, but it, no, it, 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 everyone it, has their talents. <laughs> yeah. But 2014, right. Would you ever say that there were some things that, um, uh, you know, with your clients, you saw the same thing, like, oh, here I am working with a client, you know, coaches training has me say to disconnect. And yet, 
as a as a Liam, as a human, I'm seeing that I'm having to do extra work to to disconnect. Like, ha, has it, was that ever something that you saw early in your career with coaching? Yeah, with coaching. Um. Uh. Wait. I'm sorry. So so being able to disconnect. Um. You know what? It's only more recent that I'm like yeah. it, it, that it's starting to be like, ooh, I gotta really like set up, you know, boundaries yep. and make sure. And it's interesting to kind of watch yourself go through these things. And you know, you can you can try to think about, well, why is it happening or what? But all all you can do is just kind of assess the situation as is and take action on what you decide you need to do in order to, you know, make sure you're doing right by your clients and right by yourself. I, I love how you 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 bring that up, and I, it, it was a very circuitous questioning route that I did that went from social work to coaching. Um, but then, if you're in, if you've ever been in higher education, Allison down here talks about being able to relate to it when when she was in HR doing HR work. Um, we definitely have these uh, uh, collegial relationships that happen, and as a result, we're the ones that have to create the boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. Because oftentimes it can get uh, unhealthy because they're like, you're my friend, you're, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, it's very, I'm very curious to see how you did it. And I came from a, a multicultural background, social justice. And, and so in many ways, like I, I, I remember seeing folks and the problem was a systemic issue, but I saw as, as a result, people um, experiencing racism or experiencing these major, major things. And I couldn't help. And like, I'd come home from work and this was like 10 years ago. And I'd be like, I can't do anything. Like I'm so powerless, but that, that was less about, that was less about me being powerless and more about me being able to separate, you know? Um, so I don't know if you can see, um, but there's a lot of people commenting right now. So let's go say hi to some of these people. Can you see any of these? I can, I can. I see okay. Allison. I see TC. I see right on. Jessica. So we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go down down the board. We got Ritu Goswami. Um, instead of disconnecting and compartmentalizing, what if it were all one thing? The life of flow, heart. You know. So she's throwing that out there. That's super super cool, Ritu. It's good to see you again, um, Allison. Allison, high burnout in, in helping fields is rampant. I feel like HR and social work um, are very similar in many ways. Um, uh, we're moving backwards here. But Re Rebecca, great question, Mark. Great question, Mark. No, great question, comma, Mark. Gotcha. <laughs> TC Casey, Bonita, takes one to know ya. To know, to know one, TC. Ruben, with a big old thumbs up. Can you see them coming on the screen? I'm just can, going to... Yes, okay, I can see them. I see Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Gotcha, <laughs> nice. Um, Tuan, Tuan, Buddha dude. Um, such a good question asker. That's right, question asker. Because I am not a good answerer. Um, that's why I just appeared on Buddha, Buddha Dude's podcast. Wait, for, can't wait for you guys to see that. Um, Jessica, big old heart face for you. Um, are you feeling the love coming for everybody? This is so Jorge, Jorge from Puerto Rico. Aaliyah with big old hearts. Aaliyah, love. Jorge coming at you from Puerto Rico again. The best show, love. Jorge, you are the greatest of all time. It is good to see you. I haven't seen you for a couple of days, and it keeps going. We got Gian, Allison, our girl Kyla is is in the house. Um, what are you doing, commenting on your own yeah. thing? Hey, Kyla. <laughs> I, don't so here. I can't really see who's here, but I'm so excited for whoever is here and hi. Yeah. So, so let's go talk about this. Let's go talk about this some more. Um, um, I think this has been a great career talking about your career trajectory. Let's also talk a little bit about what was going on inside of Aaliyah, because Aaliyah, you're hinting at certain things um, when it comes to um you know, ostensibly, you, you're doing quite well um, job-wise. And then there were hints that inside there were other things that um, you were striving to do. And and when there, when you're striving to be something else and you're uh, – or you're striving to be something else and, and you're something – you, you're 
in a place where you're at, where, you, where you're at. This is blah, 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 blah. It sounds like you are settling. How about that? Yes. Um, in terms of what? Because I'm sure I was settling on a ton of things, but yes. <laughs> in terms of whatever it is that you thought you were settling for, because I know that it was very broad when you were talking. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think just to focus in, what were you settling for? Um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I guess that you only know what you know, right? Yeah. And you only, you only make decisions based on the information you have at the time. And I think we all, you know, have a certain level of consciousness, right? And you take action based on that level. Um, and then when you put yourself to the challenge of kind of stepping more into yourself, being okay, like, you know, doing crazy things, like this would be crazy for me again to do like, you know, even, uh, yeah, 2014, I would never picture myself doing a video with you and like hearts and stars love you, but like, oh my God, you know, it just <laughs> Um, but, um, so probably settling on the idea that, you know, I wasn't capable of doing these things or, um, you know, was I, was I really someone who could start a, a business? I mean, I knew nothing about business. I knew about coaching. I knew about people, but business like what? No. Um, so <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think we all kind of, and I mean, I can speak more about, I'm sure there's a ton I've settled on, but I think we all kind of settle until you realize that you can step out and do more and then it's okay. And that you're still, you're still okay. Even if you fail, even if it doesn't work out, even if people, you know, think you're crazy, even if like all the different things, like if you're putting yourself first and, and saying like, I, I don't care, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to kind of challenge myself and test myself. Then you realize what you were settling for and you realize the capacity you have to create and achieve and succeed. So what did stepping out and stepping into yourself look like back then? Was it, was it, uh, was it something where someone pushed you and they were like, look, this is your goal. I see it. Um, you, you'll be able to articulate it? Or is it something where it was more internally? It, it was uh, self-actualized and it was like, uh, scared sh crapless of this, but uh, I'm going to take a step. And what did the step look like? Yes. Okay. Um, it, was, it was more internal. It was definitely more internal. I kind of was just like, you know, I was... I was excited about my social work career, but I was, I always kind of knew I was like, I want to do something bigger. And I know that until I'm kind of doing something that feels more in alignment with me and my purpose that I'll like really make it happen. I'll really put all my effort into it. So it definitely, it was more, uh, it was more coming from me. I don't think it was really coming from anywhere external, although I'm sure, you know, we all have external pressure. So, you know, yeah. those get to everyone. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it was coming a little bit more from me. What would you say is the biggest leap of faith or the biggest step you ever took? Ooh, uh, career, career wise. It was a career one. Yeah. Um, the biggest step I ever took. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I've done some pretty weird things. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, should we go down the list of the bizarre things I've tried in my life? Um, <laughs> the biggest step I've ever took, taken. Um, well, you know what? Come to think of it now, like I was always just kind of interested in pushing myself or challenging myself to do like little awkward things. I took like improv classes when I got to New York and I was like scared of, I was scared of it, but I was like, I just, I have to do it. You know, I took hip hop classes. I, um, I've done just like a bunch of really, re I just wanted to know about life. I wanted to yeah. explore. I wanted to like see what's up and I wanted to see what I was capable of, you know? Um, so the biggest leap, you know, I've now talked about this a couple of times, but one of my clients recently asked me, what was one of the best things you did for yourself inside your business that really changed things? Mm -hmm. And I told her that, it was like one day where I was kind of like being really honest with myself. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of in this, I'm kind of out of this. I'm not like going full throttle hundred percent. Like 
is this happening or not? Am I going to do this or not? Are we going to like, you know, go for it or not? And I decided I can't keep going just kind of like half-assing it. Um, yeah. So, so I, so commitment, committing was, was one of the scariest, but best things. And I think with business, it's always a recommitment, like, all right, mm. we're committing um, to what we want to do. We're recommitting to, you know, everything that, that we're going through. That is fantastic. So let me ask you this. Talk to me about what self love is. What self love is. Ooh, this is a good one. Um, <laughs> self love. Self love to me is being able to kind of figure out internally what your values are and how you can honor those values and live in accordance with them um, in the face of everything that, you know, that we go through in life. And, um, you know, we, we can't always walk the exact path that we want to walk and do the exact things that we want to do. But, um, you know, if you're able to kind of be true to yourself, um, and you know, no matter what, if you feel like you're not doing great, still saying it's okay, I'm not doing great. And I'm still here for myself. I have my own back. If you feel like you're doing awesome, still being there for yourself, you know, um, getting really attuned with what, what feels good and, and living by it. Okay. Do you make an, a distinction between, uh, the terms authenticity, self-compassion, and self-forgiveness when it comes to self-love? Okay. Because I felt like this was a very specific word that you used. And I'm curious as to, as to the, uh, you know, that specific terminology. Yes. Okay. So authentic, you said authenticity, self-compassion <laughs> and self-love. And as, and self-forgiveness too. Those are often, you see them so like coupled together. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. in many ways I, uh, I could see, those being interchangeable, but self-love seems like something different. And so like, is there a way to articulate a difference or am I just making that up? There, there's no difference between all of those terms. Yeah, no, you, I don't think you're making that up at all. Um, that's a good question. What would be the difference? You know, I think self-love would be more letting everything, letting it all be okay. Letting it be okay when you feel completely down. Letting it be okay when you feel like you're not walking your talk. Letting it be okay when things aren't going well. Um, still being there for yourself. And if you're not there for yourself, letting it be okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. always just knowing that, you know, this there's no rule book. There's no right or wrong. There's no perfect. Um, and that's something I've definitely kind of had to learn again and again. You know, I definitely am a recovering perfectionist. I want ever yeah. all my ducks to be in a row. Um, <laughs> but in this career, my God, like ducks here, ducks there, ducks everywhere. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, it's amazing, though, because I think with this career, you get to learn how to be OK with that and how to trust and how to let go and how to realize that the more you can step into um, you know, compassion for yourself, the more that, you know, things flow and the better it feels. So I hope I answered that. <laughs> Beautifully. And and I wanted to follow that up with when or what was the, what was the mechanism or, or the situation in which you learned that self-love um, could have a correlation with business success? Because in so many ways, business success has like, you don't, I don't hear a lot of people saying like, S -s start with self-love. Like I hear people saying, um, okay, this plan, this plan, this blueprint, this, that, these steps, uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you who are on with me, this funnel, you know, like the, you know, all of those things are things that lead to, for example, increasing your client base and constantly doing it. Where did you, like, where did you find out about the self-love piece? Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. Um, so I think our minds have a tendency to focus on the how, right? Especially as a new coach, um, you want information, you want a path, you want to know, okay, well, how, how do I get from A to B? 
And it's almost like, I don't know if biological is the right word, ingrained. It's like psychological. You want the steps. You want that information. Um, And then you start to realize, oh, wait, why did this work for someone else and not for me? Or why, you know, if there was one exact path to business success, everyone would be successful in business, you know? Um, So you start to learn, okay, so what, what makes sense for me? And how is it, you know, business is so much about building relationships. So how can I best build relationships? How can I best create? Um, I think an amazing kind of shift that starts to happen as you get, grow in your business is you start learning, at least for a lot of the people that I work with, um, that there you have to kind of step into your intuition a bit and come from a place of, all right, what, what makes sense to me? I've heard the blueprints. I've heard this and that. And those are all great. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of times we do need strategy and we do need to think about, you know, what's the best way to create this funnel? What's the best way to put out this email series? You know, all of those different things. But if you don't ground it in, I guess this is where the authenticity comes in. If you don't ground it in your authenticity and it's a learning process and it's all good, um, then things don't flow. And I've been on the side of both of that where I'm just like, control, I'm going to control everything. (laughs) And you're like, wait, what am I even doing? Um, and then you let go and you realize, oh, if I just stepped into trust and like yeah. a little more for myself, things just flow. Aaliyah, I absolutely love that. Um, I never thought of um, this as self-love, um, but probably the first six months of of my, my coaching um, career, I called it um, – the same thing as um, transitioning from a person who sings karaoke to a true singer songwriter. Like I had to find my voice Mm -hmm. and um, you know, the first six months I was singing other people's songs. I was asking questions like, you know, the, the coaching company that trained me would ask. Um, I was asking it with the same tempo, you know, Um, and there, there become, there, comes a part where you become very unapologetic about who you are and what you stand for. Mm -hmm. And you look at something and you're like, that blueprint worked for so-and-so, but it will not work with me on a sales call. Mm -hmm. It will not work with me on a sales call. And um, I never thought of it as self-love, but there there is a certain self-love aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I think in your first year, Self-love is probably one of the most critical things that you have to continue to practice, especially because there's so many um, uh, either people internally or voices internally telling you like, am I cut out for this? Am I cut out for this? Am I cut out for this? So I think that that's really interesting. Now, I wanted to go to the idea of strategy. Um, You talked about strategy and strategy only getting you so far. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that you can have, again, all your ducks in a row. You can follow an exact template. You can do exactly what you think you're supposed to do. But then if like that heart and your kind of soul, whatever intuition isn't in it, um, then things just don't work. And then you get frustrated and you're like, well, why didn't this work? This was supposed to work and it doesn't. Um, so yeah, I think that um, it's kind of that that balance. Yeah, yeah, that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense, right? What works for you or what works for somebody else will not necessarily work for you. Yeah. Um, so be careful with those ninety nine pro uh, ninety nine pro dollar programs, y'all, <laughs> because uh, if if they don't have office hours, they really are just giving you a blueprint, you know. Um, you know, yeah. so um, I'm curious about this. Um, talk about now increasing, like enrolling clients and receiving. What do you mean by enrolling clients and receiving? Because I've heard you talk about that before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I think something, and I guess this kind of goes back to the whole social work thing in a way. You know, I think as people who really do get um, kind of, you know, feel good from giving, 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 um, 
I was I was talking about this yesterday or the other day with someone that giving allows you to kind of be in control. Whereas if you're receiving and if you're enrolling clients, right, it's in a way a little bit vulnerable because you have to kind of just trust and allow and know that you're providing value and that they want that value. But um, it does take letting go of control. It does take stepping out of your own ego and your own need. And it does take focusing on the value that you are providing to this person and what's so important about that for them. Um, so I guess when we talk about, uh, you know, receiving or, or increasing your client base, I kind of just like almost view like sitting back in a way and, um, letting letting things come to you instead of being in the energy of control and force and need and you know um meeting some goal that you have and instead yeah. just trusting and and i think the uh the aforementioned um sort of wanting control comes off at and and even wanting to serve comes off as being chasey or graspy and like it that is like the, the, the most like gross thing when it comes to folks who could be potential clients for you like they don't want people like being graspy and all that kind of stuff it, and and we're like oh, can't you see that I'm I want to serve you and it's just it, it makes total sense that it, it's yeah. more of a receiving process and just kind of um pulling back and, and just kind of laying back yeah um, and, and I, when, as you're saying that, I could see a lot of um, new coaches, new entrepreneurs being in that want to be helping mode and really pushing a lot of people away. Would you say that might be one of the number one things that you're seeing with your with your clients? That's such a good, um, what's it called? Uh... Observation? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need that word. I can't move on. Um, that's such a good observation. And yes, so much so. Um, I think that new coaches, whoever, get so excited about their vision and about all of these different things that you've learned um, and uh, this whole new perspective about how to help people and what it means. And you just want to be like, guess what? I can change your life. Like, yeah. you know? Um, but if you don't, if you aren't able to really meet someone where they're at and on their level of consciousness and on their level of understanding and really kind of back out of your own need, although you're excited and you still get to be excited and it's amazing, but it almost becomes more rewarding when you really get to plug into someone and feel out, okay, this is the way that this person thinks and feels and how can we kind of like, you know, walk them along this without pushing my vision on them. You know, um, yeah. there are, it's interesting because I've kind of, you know, I've done hiring recently and I've, um, into my business and I've just talked to people and, you know, I'm always kind of like thinking about the way that service providers are. And it's unfortunate because sometimes there are people who are so, so good at their jobs, so talented, um, so professional, so amazing. But their vision just kind of like, this is a disgusting thing I'm going to say, but like projectile vomits at you. Mm -hmm. And it causes people to be like, oh my God, like this is, I, I can't even get a word in edgewise. So the ability to listen, the ability to really connect with someone where they're at, right? Um, that is something that I think can really skyrocket your business and you have you have to practice it. I think that's what's awesome about that is when you're meeting someone where they are at, you'll know it because it doesn't feel salesy or sleazy anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you're sitting there like listening to where they're at and where they want to go and, and what they feel is holding them back. And you, you can very easily articulate, yeah, I'm the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is going to work. Yeah. You know? And so um, it doesn't feel it. It doesn't feel like, hey, you want me to tell you about my coaching program and my snake oils? You know, like it's what? it's not that anymore. It really is a, a, a an authentic call, one in which um, you're connecting, um, a relationship is being established, and that's really what a lot of coaching is all about. Yeah, and it starts with self love. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. That's so great. That is so great. Okay. So here, I'm, I want to ask you a couple things. Um, 
uh, the big thing is is this. Uh, you can't see my hands, right? So I have one hand on the left hand of the screen, other hand on the right hand of the screen, right? Okay. Um, even though we say that, you know, keep practicing it, it is a an epic shift to move from the giving side, the salesy side almost, to the receiving side of things um, where, where we meet clients where they're at. What, what two or three tips do you have that can help um, those of us move from the, uh, the giving side where it's salesy to the receiving side where it's much less salesy and we're getting uh, clients almost on demand? Oh my gosh. I mean, I could talk about this all day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to think of the, the best things I could offer. One of them is to get really honest about with yourself. How easy is it for you to receive and to allow and to, you know, feel as if you deserve is the wrong word, but like it's natural that you would have clients. It's na it's natural because you're a great coach because you have value to provide people and not providing them that is kind of like hoarding your own shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's natural that people would come to you. It's natural that, you know, you it, it's less about you and your ego and more about um, the value that you have to give to people that people really need and really want. Um, so getting into that space and being honest with yourself about how comfortable doing that is for you. And I'm someone who, it definitely wasn't comfortable for me. It's a practice. Um, but you learn how to say, yeah, like, of course, you know. Um, and let's see. The second thing is thinking about um, remaining unattached from the outcome. And I know we hear that a lot, but really thinking about what that means. What does it mean to you know, give to someone out of the goodness of your heart and really just caring. Like, I want this person to succeed because you do. You want this person to succeed. And knowing that you don't have to get anything back, what you're getting is the fact that, you know, you've kind of connected with this person. That's awesome. You've helped them in some capacity. That's awesome. Knowing that things don't um, necessarily come back to you in a direct linear way it may come from another place it may come from you know who knows these things come from you receive in just different ways so letting go of your own expectations not making it mean anything about you because it certainly doesn't um like <laughs> sales you can always get better at sales yeah. but knowing that you love being a person who helps and you get to just help and trusting that it'll come back to you Amazing. Amazing. Uh, do you have a third? Do I have a third? Um, <laughs> I'm sure I do. Uh, okay. We were talking about receiving and what was the other one? Uh, going from receiving to uh, actually going from the giving uh -huh. side that we sometimes think is the way to go to uh -huh. the receiving side. Yes. Okay. The other thing I would say more tangibly as a new coach um, would be really to start visioning and picturing yourself not in a place of need or desperation or making any of it mean anything about you because it certainly doesn't, but being able to, um, you know, trust that people come into your life in the right way, really feel as if you're a coach who has tons of clients because in a way, like you kind of already do, you are already, I'm sure talk to your friends, help your people, you know, just trusting that like, ugh, I don't know why the word abundance is weirding me out right now, but trusting that, that, um, that abundance is all around you. And really, if yeah. you step back and allow, um, it can come in. Yeah, I love it. Um, and, and not to get super woo woo, um, but uh, in many ways, as you sharpen up things like your website and all that, all that stuff and start broadcasting out who it, who you are and what you stand for based on self-love, who you unapologetically are there. I, I firmly feel the 6 billion or so people in on this earth. There are people looking for Aaliyah's and Mark Cordones and Allison's and Ritu's, you know, and um, all, it's just a matter that they haven't found a way to connect with you yet. And so in many ways, the cool game is how do I get them to connect and, and know that I exist? You know? Yeah. So I love that, that idea of visioning and picturing it's, it's not, you're, you're not, creating clients the clients are all all around us they just 
don't know yet. The antenna signal hasn't been put up or the signal hasn't been, hasn't been sent out yet. Mm -hmm. I love it. I pushed you to do three and I knew that you, you could easily do three because you have 25 more. Um, you have <laughs> 25 ways. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's only 10 actually. It's only okay. 10 right now, but more are coming. Okay, but more are coming. So yeah. I, I want you to go to the the uh, the little link that um, I have up for you on the site. It's a it's a bitly link. Um, and so it's a cool little article that's it's fast, it's thorough, and it just gets to the point. And a lot of it has to do with these these little things that have to do with business. But if you look at what Aaliyah is talking about um, in her in her in her giveaway, it's actually about self love, and anyone can relate to that. So I would highly encourage you to um, not only go to Aaliyah's site, go to her Instagram, go to her Facebook. I put all of it up, but um, uh, go to the bit the bit.ly link. It's right there. I'm looking at it. There's lightning bolts underneath it. It's a wonderful thing. And thank you, Aaliyah, for um, uh, providing that for us today. Um, Aaliyah, you have said it all. You have said enough. I <laughs> am ready to shut down the show for the day. But before we go, I want to thank you again. Your email, everything is up there. Um, I want y'all to connect with Aaliyah, especially given the fact that a lot of us in here are new coaches. Um, I teach a new coach training program, but there's plenty of, there's plenty of new coaches out there. So like, or new coach training program. So Aaliyah, thank you for coming on. Um, this is why the show's called the golden Mike Aaliyah. Did you know this? I did not. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So here's here's where we go. Here's where we go from here. We are going to end the show. But I want you to do a little visioning exercise with me. And I want you to imagine that there's a golden microphone that's descending from your screen right now. And it's stopping right in front of you. Um, and for two minutes, this golden microphone gets blasted out to the entire world and gets translated into every single language. And so for two minutes, you can say whatever you want to the world, whatever message you want, Aaliyah. So Aaliyah, your golden mic is live. Cool. Um, well, first of all, what an amazing opportunity. <laughs> Um, I've never had a golden mic before. What message would I give to the world? Um, wow. You know, I guess one of my messages, one of the most kind of important ones would, for a new coach, as a new coach, would be to uh, follow the fear. Um, you know, I think we were... Uh, we live in a society where we get to be super comfortable and there's so many things that allow us to feel comfortable and allow us to feel good and not have to kind of challenge ourselves or put ourselves out there. Um, and because of that, we can kind of just remain in, in, in fear and, and, and not, not move forward. Um, and I know that I spent a lot of time in my life doing that because of being scared or because of, you know, worrying about what repercussions would be out there or, you know, worrying about who I would impact or how I would impact them. Or if, you know, people would like me or if, um, you know, if I would resonate with everyone, um, if things would be perfect. Right. Um, and what I've learned is that when you can recognize the fear and take action in spite of it and know that fear and worry and concern and being afraid is really just, um, it's all emotions that we have. We all have emotions. We all have thoughts. We all have feelings in every different direction. There is not one person on the planet who's happy all the time. And there's not, you know, we, we all have all the things, but when you can kind of follow the fear and recognize that it's leading you to what you really want to do, and what your kind of purpose is, then you create so much more capability and confidence, not only for yourself, but for everyone else who you're gonna 
impacts. Like there were definitely times where I could have stayed small. There still are times. There absolutely still are times. And I have to remind myself of this all the time. But every time I do, it not only benefits me, but it benefits everyone who, you know, hopefully those who, who connect with me and, and clients and, you know, prospects and all of that. So woo, golden mic. I, ho- I hope I uh, <laughs> did a good job. <laughs> Aaliyah Levinson Kehoe, um, stick out your hand. Stick out your hand in front of you. Now drop that golden mic like it's hot. Drop that golden mic. This has been episode 51. It's your boy, Mark Cordone. Aaliyah, Aaliyah has been my guest. She has been awesome off the chain. Um, she just, I think you literally just did the golden mic in one breath. Amazing. Amazing. I um, hope to have you back. Check her out. I've got one final thing, one final question for everybody. If you're living life to the fullest and you're happy on a daily basis, my final question for you is, what is your responsibility to the greater good? I'm Mark Cordone. This is Aaliyah. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. <laughs>